Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is street. S-T-R-E-E-T. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America who invite you to see and drive the delightful, the lovely DeSoto for 1956. The time has come. It's very clear. The car you wanted is really here. It's delightful. It's the lovely. It's DeSoto. You understand the reasons why. For once you drive it, you want to buy. It's delightful. It's the lovely. It's DeSoto. Now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the flying A duck will come down and pay him 101 bucks. The way tonight is street. Well, um, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Mentor Klein to be on the program tonight. His partner is a very special guest, Dr. Giovanni. I've seen Dr. Giovanni work, and I thought that if I invited him down to the show that you could have some fun with him, Groucho. So here they are. Folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Hmm. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50.50. It's a common word, something you see every day. Well, what have we here? Two men, eh? How dull. <laughs> <laughs> Mentor Klein. That's me. Yes, uh, Mentor Klein right. and Dr. Giovanni. Eh? Where are you from, Mr. Klein? I'm from Chicago. In fact, I'm from the south side. Uh, south side of the, Chicago? Near the Forest Hill School. I, didn't you go there? No, I never family? went to school. I uh, I lived in the south side, south, but that's I, right. I didn't I go to right school. There. I went to the Wilson Avenue Theater. <laughs> <laughs> but why did you come to California? I mean, was this the gold rush? Or? For the air. Get nice, clean California air. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're licking your wounds now, aren't you? Well, it's been in my declining years. Well, yeah. you'll spend your declining years. It'll be very swift if you stay here. <laughs> I would say about three more days of this will do it to all of us. Huh? Are you for high rat? Yes, I work for the Pickwick Bookshop in Hollywood. Oh. I asked if you were married, and you oh, said you worked I'm for a bookshop. Sorry. I am married. <laughs> I didn't understand the German. Yeah, well, I... Uh, it's not top grade, German. <laughs> but you, you are married, huh? I'm married, yes. I'm Despite married the fact that you work in a bookshop. That's right. You know what? With the movies, television, and the do-it-yourself craze, I'm surprised there are any bookstores left. Do people still read? Oh, yes. People are more literate than ever, I think. They, they, they read more than ever. Is that true? Yes. I know. I went out and bought a book right after I bought my television set. <clears throat> One of the legs on the set was short, and I used it to prop it up. <laughs> you, are you a Dr. Giovanni? I am Dr. Giovanni. <clears throat> what kind of a doctor are you, doctor? I am, uh, I'm a manipulator. Oh, a manipulator. Yes, sir. In other words, you're a chiropractor, huh? No, I'm a manipulator. Well, with what kind of a manipulator are you, doctor? Well, you run a shell game down on Main Street? <laughs> no, I'm picking pockets. I'm the world's greatest pickpocket. Well, that's a pretty strong statement there, Doctor. It happens I come from a long line of pickpockets. <laughs> I am in a theater and I'm in nightclub. I ask from the audience people to come up, and I relieve them from the pocket book, from suspender, and watch whatever they do. I get them. You do this in a nightclub? Yes, sir. It's a pretty tough spot to operate, isn't it? Well, After the nightclub gets through, there's not much left in their wallet. <laughs> how, did you, how do you get away with this thievery, Doc? Do people well, know when you're extracting their money? No, I get money for it. I take them away. And so I... Do you retain the money? Well, uh, later on, yes. You mean about 20 years later? No, no, after the show. Well, a man would have to be pretty dumb to mm. let you get away with anything like that. Do you just pick on squares, or have you ever lifted anything from anybody that was real uh, real smart? Well, it was... Uh, real one, cool, I mean. One gentleman... One gentleman was very little, was very really cold. outstanding. Uh, he was not too dumb. I took his pocketbook and his watch and his suspender, and uh, the gentleman looked around him less than one minute, and the name of the gentleman was J. Edgar Hoover. Oh. 
Well, what did Mr. Hoover say about this? Did he give you a... Well, he said... Did he take back his vacuum cleaner? No, he said, uh, (laughs) you are the fastest worker what I ever seen. And thank you, you return me everything. Oh, I bet he says that to all the pickpockets. I don't think so. Well, Doc, I'm curious to see you operate. Let's see you take this... uh, Bookman's wallet. Could you would, do that? Would you like to see it? Yeah, I would love to step see it. Step over I'll be here. Watching you like a horse. You step over here and watch need, it very careful. I need some. Now, usually, which pocket do you think the pocketbook supposed to be in the pocket? Well, they usually have it over here. No, on the left-hand no, side, don't they? no. This pocketbook is in that one, you see. Well, how did but you know that? So it's, it's here. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is something. You like it? Yeah, I'm crazy. How, how you like this one? Come here. With <laughs> Put it away. Don't worry about it. Now you can see why I'm the world's greatest pickpocket. I invented this egg, and I am the father of this egg. Doc, you're about (laughs) as shifty a character as anybody we've ever had of. (laughs) That includes Mr. Klein. Thank you. Now let's see how successful you are at playing our game here. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you can correctly name the professions of these famous people. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. We want one answer between you, and uh, you can start from 10, 20, all the way up to 100. 90. All right. Was, uh, what was Booker T. Washington's profession? He was a teacher. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's true. You now have $190. Now, what do you want to try? 80. 80? What was uh, Edvard Grieg's profession? Musician. Musician. Composer, that's Composer. right. You now have $270. Now, what are you going to try? 70. Seventy. What was William Allen White's profession? Newspaper editor. Editor and journalist is correct. You now have three hundred and forty dollars. Sixty. A hundred. A hundred. A hundred. What? What was Marcel Proust's profession? He was a writer. Novelist writer. and writer is correct, and a great one too. Huh? And you wind up with four hundred forty dollars. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. Thanks and a merry Christmas <coughs> to the soda plum dealers. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, thank you very much indeed, Dad. So before I leave you. I would like to give you a souvenir. (laughs) Whether you're driving on a long cross-country trip or wheeling your way through city traffic, you'll stay more alert and safe when you drive the new 1956 DeSoto with full-time power steering, one of the new DeSoto's great safety features. It does all the work, all the time. You have all the fun of safer, relaxed driving. The new Forward Look DeSoto gives you many additional safety features, too. Features the DeSoto has had for years. Safety rim wheels, power brakes, a unique, completely independent handbrake, plus safety door locks and optional seat belts. DeSoto's exclusive push-button drive selector is a safety feature, too. It's out of everyone's reach but yours and you can't make a mistake using it. In a word, with the new DeSoto, you get everything for safer, more enjoyable driving, plus the greatest price deal imaginable. We dare you to compare DeSoto with cars priced $2,000 higher. Yet you can get a wonderful deal on the new DeSoto today. That's because DeSoto sales have already doubled last year. Compare. Drive and price a DeSoto before you decide. And remember, for a Christmas gift that will give the whole family pleasure all year round, give the delightful, the lovely DeSoto for 1956. Uh, Groucho, we have a housewife for you now. She's Mrs. Uh, Edith Marsh. Her partner is a special guest, General Clarence A. Shoup. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $101. It's a common word, something you see every day. General Shoup and Mrs. Marsh. Hey, General, we're glad to have you aboard. Thank you. Glad to be here, Doctor. Mrs. Marsh, I notice you spell your name uh, E-D-Y-T-H-E. That's Edith. Why is that? What's wrong with the uh, regular customary way of spelling it? I know of no other way to spell it. I've always spelled it that way, Doctor. Do they call you Edith or Edith? Mm, they usually call me Edie. Edie? Mm-hmm. I'd like to have you call me Edie, if oh. you don't mind. Well, you'll have to learn to spell your name differently. I, If you want to pronounce it Edith, I can't call you Edie. How old are you, Edie? 
Oh, a gentleman never asked a lady her age. Now, that's very true. Now, how old are you? <laughs> Approximately. Well, can we just forget the whole thing? Yes, we can. And I'll call you Edith. Now, General, you wouldn't mind telling us your age, would you? No, I wouldn't. Forty-seven. Forty-seven. Well, you're a fine-looking lad. What is your first name again, uh, General? Clarence. Clarence. Uh, Clarence? General Clarence Shoot. Your middle name wouldn't be Oop, would it? <laughs> no. No, Oop Shoot. Not quite. It's worse than that. Well, what could be worse than Oop Shoot? Uh, come on, Clarence. What's your middle okay. name? Uh, well, maybe I'll... Adelbert. Adelbert, huh? You're right, it's worse than oop, huh? <laughs> you got a lot of decorations there on your chest. Could you tell us what they are, General? Well, I have the uh, Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal, the Army Commendation, Croix de Guerre, Distinguished Unit Citation, and various theater medals. You could probably wear a lot more if you wanted to, couldn't you? Not legally. No, I think you're just being modest. Are you, are you, <laughs> are you living at Camp Pendleton? Yeah. Groucho, this happens to be a Air Force uniform I'm wearing, and I live in Beverly Hills. You mean there's an Air Force base in Beverly Hills? <laughs> Good place. I always thought all that commotion came from a pack of Cub Scouts who escaped from their den mother. <laughs> are you married, General? Yes, I am. Oh, you've seen a lot of fighting. Huh? <laughs> Any of those medals for matrimony? No, I don't wear those. Those are not usually seen, are they? No. <laughs> There's scallops on the back of your neck. Behind the scenes. How did you meet your commanding officer? Well, I met her in uh, Palm Springs. She was down there on a vacation with Alexis Smith, and a friend of mine from Lockheed, Louis Wolfkiller, and I went down for a weekend just before I went overseas, and uh, he introduced me. Oh. Alexa Smith, and uh, is your wife an actress, too? Yes, uh, she's Julie Bishop. Oh. Well, you have a very attractive and talented star for a wife. I've seen her in many pictures. What are your duties these days with the Air Force? I'm commander of the uh, 146 Fighter Interceptor Wing of the California Air National Guard. Hmm. What does California need an Air Force for? We have no air out here. <laughs> what are you flying? Nothing but smog, huh? Uh, we get above the smog. How high do you have to go before you get out of the smog? It wasn't very high today. It was only up about uh, 900 feet. Oh. Actually, right. we're... Uh, the Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force, and we're part of the Air Defense Command. And in that uh, category, we are... Uh, engaged in a portion of the air defense of Southern California. We operate under tactical air control at 27th Air Division as a regular Air Force unit. What are the advantages of joining an outfit like this, General? Well, I think it's a terrific ground show. It's a wonderful opportunity for young men now. They can serve their military obligation and still stay at home. Uh, we do most of our work on weekends or evenings, and these boys can... Uh, maintain their normal living. If they're going to college, they can go out and serve in the Air National Guard and complete their military obligation. It's a terrific opportunity. I gather you recommend this as a good part-time career for young men, don't you? I certainly do, and uh, I can speak from experience. I started out as a private and worked my way up to my present position. <laughs> well, can everybody be a general after a while? Well, they all have the equal opportunity. You hear that, man? Join this outfit immediately, and you too can marry a girl like Julie Bishop. <laughs> well, you're an unusual team. I wish I could talk at greater length, but the time has come for you to earn some greenbacks. I know you desperately need this money. I presume you both know how to play the rules of You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple won $440, and the secret word is street. General information. Uh, say, that's you, general information, isn't it? <laughs> About 90 dollars, eh? All right. According to the Bible, the races of mankind sprang from three brothers: Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Who was their father? Let's see if the general has been doing his homework. Who are those people again, Ruffin? Ham, Shem, and Japheth. J A P H E T H. 
Who is their father? You don't know, guess. Well, it was Noah. But if it makes you feel any better, General, I didn't know it either. <laughs> I'll guarantee I didn't. Well, you uh, have half your hundred dollars. You now have fifty dollars. Sixty. What are the initials USO stand for? And I want the exact words. USO. United Service Organization. That is right, Edie. That is right. <laughs> And I'll have $110. Hey, she's pretty good, huh? Very Getting good. better now. Okay, what are you going to go for? Okay. She, said, she said try 100. 100, all right. What is the capital of the state of Nevada? We think Tonopah. No. You'll have to fly over Nevada sometime, <laughs> General, huh? It's Carson City. You now have $55. That's a tricky question. Everybody says Reno. Everybody is divorced, says Reno. Everybody gets wiped out, says Las Vegas. What are you going to go for? 80? 70? 80? 50? 40? 80. In order to protect a trademark, it must be registered with what United States government office? United States Patent Office. Never a truer word has been said. <laughs> patent Office is right. You now have $145, and that's your score. Well, thanks, and Merry Christmas from the Soda Plymouth Dealers. Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> Roger, we have a young married couple for you, Mr. and Mrs. Arnie Waldstrom. Folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and take home an extra hundred and one dollars. It's a common word, something you see you see every day. Mr. and Mrs. Waldenstrom. And Mr. Waldenstrom, I notice on this card that there are two little dots over your name. What is that for? Is that to confuse the police? No, it's an umlaut from the O. In Sweden, you pronounce the name Waldenstrom. Waldenstrom? Waldenstrom, yes. Oh, I see. Well, where is your home, Mr. Waldenstrom? In Sweden, Stockholm. Oh, uh, you're Mrs. Waldenstrom. Yes. Huh? What is your first name? We like to get as informal as quickly as possible here. Aggie. Aggie, eh? Yes. Oh. Well, is that a Swedish name, uh, Aggie? No, that's uh, that's a Hungarian name. But when I went to Sweden, that was a Swedish name. Oh, you're Hungarian, huh? I am Hungarian. No, oh. in this case, it's Hungarian name. But here in the states, they have Agnes and Aggie. He's a Svenska, and you're a Hungarian. Yes. Oh. Well, where do you live, Aggie? In Hungary or Sweden? No, in San Pedro. <laughs> Well, is that in Sweden or Hungary, huh? No, it's Los Angeles Harbor. Oh, you live in the harbor, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't know whether I'm getting Hungarian goulash or smorgasbord. <laughs> uh, Arnie, what are you doing in San Pedro? Are you running from the police in Sweden? Oh, no, I'm the head of the Swedish Maritime Division in San Pedro. Well, uh, you're a diplomat? Yes. Well, what do you do at San Pedro? See that no Norwegian sardines swim into the harbor? <laughs> I take care of the Swedish vessels and the Swedish seamen. I use your seamen's passport for them. Oh. Don't you have to know a lot of languages to be a diplomat, Arnie? Or how many languages do you know? How about, I don't know, English, German, French, Spanish, and then Swedish, of course. Well, could you say something in all these languages? Say oh, something yes. about me in Swedish, Norwegian, Danish, French, Spanish, and German. Jag har ett undligt ansikte på din Swedish, min Spanish, hon har sett sig någon akara extraordinaria. Men den min Björnen ser man inte som just precis. I've just been insulted in six different languages. <laughs> Now, what did, what did you actually say? You have an unusual face. I have a fruitful face? Unusual face. Unusual? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Certainly, fathers north and compliments of the year. <laughs> may I say a few words? You, well, may I? Yeah, remember, I you're a wife, I and just say yes, a few may words. I? Table, trees, sky, money, hand, car, ball. Nothing can be. In Hungary, you know, they say how you make an omelet in Hungary. Hungary. 
They say, first you steal two eggs. That's the first thing. <laughs> and somebody once said, if you have a Hungarian for a friend, you don't need any enemies. <laughs> and this is living proof of what I've just been talking about. Here's a woman had the effrontery to name eight different secret words and fortunately didn't hit it. <laughs> How do you like being an American housewife? What do you think of our electric garbage disposals, automatic dishwashers, and all the American gadgets that oh, we yes. have today? they are great. Uh -huh. They are wonderful. But he wouldn't let me uh, buy those things because, you know, he wants to pay everything with cash. Cash? I like to pay for credit as the American people does. I mean, you buy and then you pay. <laughs> <laughs> but we can get in touch. cash. Arnie, is this true? You want to buy everything up for cash? Not everything, but that's, more or less. That's un-American, Arnie. <laughs> you keep that up and you'll pauperize the entire American economy. <laughs> the lucky thing, you have diplomatic immunity. You know, you could get thrown in jail for wanting to pay cash. <laughs> After you're here long, you'll realize that in this country, nobody lives within their means. <laughs> Honey, a Sweden democracy like ours, isn't it? Yes. But, but, uh, don't you have a king there, too? Yes, who is that? Well, do you have elections? Who's running for king this year? <laughs> we have a permanent one. You have what? A permanent king. A permanent king? Yes. You know, 1956 is a big election year in this country. What is your biggest election? Well, we had, uh, we just had an election about uh, driving, <coughs> if the people want to drive on the left side or on the right side. That's what the whole election was about? Yeah. <laughs> well, who was running? Just the automobiles, huh? <laughs> Why don't they just drive on both sides like they do in Los Angeles? <laughs> well, you're a very nice and attractive couple, and you're a credit to both countries. Three countries. Thank you. United States, Hungary, and Sweden. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. And I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come for you to win some money, which means play you bet your life. Yes. Please, Mr. Mark. Yes. Give the question slowly. Slowly? It is possible. Okay, I'll take about 20 minutes with each one. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's it. I presume you both understand the rules, huh? Yes. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple still leads with $440. I'll give you a brief synopsis of some of the most famous movies of all time. You give me the title of the movie. I presume, I imagine most of these played in Europe. Some of these go quite a way back. And remember, the more the question is worth, the tougher it is. Now, you can start with 10, 20, all the way to 100, and one answer between you. Yeah. The boss? The boss? Yeah. Now it comes out. Yeah. Only you. 70. Yeah. All right. In 1943, Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman made a picture centering around a cafe in French Morocco. What was the name of this picture? Casablanca. That is right. Casablanca. <laughs> I'll have $170. Now, suppose she said some other picture, and then you'd lost some money, see? So we want one answer. Now, what do you want to go for? 80, 50, 100? Oh, 60. 60? Is that uh, satisfied? That's okay. <laughs> well, Ingrid Bergman and Charles Boyer starred in a movie about a man who tried to drive his wife insane. What picture was it? just found out definitely. <coughs> What's the answer? Come on, take a guess if you don't know. The Arch of Triumph. Huh? What did you say? The Arch of Triumph. No, no, it was Gaslight. Yes. Gaslight. Yes. They now have $85. They you now have $85. Now, what do you want to go for? 80 90 60 I 60 you 50. have. 50. Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck made a picture about a princess and a newspaper man. What was the name of it? Holiday Romaine. Romaine well, uh, Holiday. Romaine Holiday at the salad. Uh -huh. <laughs> now you all have $135. I had that at a nightclub. <laughs> holiday Romaine. It's very good. <laughs> With Hungarian dressing. Now what are you going to go for? <laughs> 40. 40? Yes. Gloria Swanson made a movie about a silent picture star who fell in love with a young screenwriter. What was the name of this picture? Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard is right. Don't go any further. You wind up with $175. Well, thanks and a Merry Christmas from the DeSoto Plymouth Thank Dealers. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
That means that Dr. Giovanni and Mr. Klein, with $440, get the chance at the $2,500 question. The delightful, the lovely DeSoto for 1956 has made such a tremendous hit with so many people that sales have doubled last year. Well, that does more than just make us happy. It makes it possible for your DeSoto Plymouth dealer to offer you an exceptional price deal right now on the DeSoto model of your choice. It means that right now, within your budget, you can move up to the greatest car in the medium price field, the 56 DeSoto. And that's a real thrill. Because DeSoto compares with the car's price $2,000 higher. Just compare DeSoto's daring flight sweep styling, sensational new push-button driving, full-time power steering, power brakes. Compare these fabulous DeSoto features with those of the most expensive cars. Then you'll know why DeSoto is your best buy for 1956. Tomorrow, drive and price a DeSoto before you decide. And remember... For the greatest family Christmas gift possible, give a new 1956 DeSoto. You'll understand the reasons why. For once you drive it, you want to buy. It's delightful. It's the lovely. It's the soda. Groucho, here are Dr. Giovanni and Mr. Klein, all set for the $2,500 question. Right in here, gentlemen. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single <clears> answer. <throat> Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Ready? The Harding administration was embarrassed by a scandal involving the unauthorized use of naval oil reserves. It was one of the biggest cases of its kind in our history. For $2,500, what was this scandal called? Talk it over. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Teapot Dome. That's absolutely right, Teapot yeah. Dome. So you win $2,500 plus how much in the quiz, George? $440 in the quiz. That's $2,940. What are you going to do with all that money? <laughs> I'm going to buy a hearing aid. A hearing aid, eh? A hearing aid. Well, congratulations Thank and you. Merry Christmas from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. You bet your life. Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Mark Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. Don't miss the Chrysler Corporation's big TV show on another network. And don't forget Groucho's television show, brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America, who invite you to visit your neighborhood showroom tomorrow to see and drive the delightful, the lovely DeSoto for 1956. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... It's delightful, it's the lovely, it's DeSoto... Reminder from the National Safety Council. Remember the motto. If you drive, don't drink. If you drink, don't drive. Obey its warning. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. <laughs>